What's up guys, welcome back to another video. My name is Jordan Bachner. In this video, I wanted to reminisce on a video that I made about a year ago. So it was about real estate investing on Long Island and I brought you step by step through a deal that I found in Long Beach, New York, which is on Long Island, Nassau County, which actually made sense that if you bought it, rehabbed it and rented it out, it would actually make you money. So now I wanna bring you into another deal a year later. Is it still possible to invest in 2020? This market is crazy. Everyone's been telling you, including me, that the market is up right now. It's a seller's market. Don't buy, don't buy, don't buy it's gonna be hard to find deals right now. But lo and behold, there's still deals out there if you're looking in the right places. So I'm gonna bring you through a deal that's currently on the market. Right now, it's still active on the market for sale. That's actually a multifamily deal that is really great and will produce a return that might surprise you even in this market. So without further ado, let's get right into it. Okay guys, let's get started here. Let's jump right into it. The property, and this property is still on the market. So I'm a real estate agent. This is the MLS that I can see everything. Now the property is still on the market. So this is a great deal. However, I did call up the listing agent on this one to see what's going on with it. And they said that they do have an accepted offer and they do have half a contract already signed. So most likely this deal um, is going to be taken. However, there is a chance that it could fall, up, fall back off and you can get this deal as well. But let's just jump right into the numbers. So 153 Cedar Road in Mastic Beach. This is in Suffolk County. You can see by these pictures, um, they are rough. I mean, the guy's uh, finger is right in the picture. Not how you want to take pictures. But nevertheless, let's just run the numbers anyway. So the list price is $359,000. The taxes on it are $7,400. So what this is, is it's two cottages, it says. Legal two-family home, two separate detached homes on one property, tenant-occupied property being sold, occupied. Each tenant, large shed for additional storage. That's great. They pay their own utilities. This is huge, guys. They pay all of their own utilities, including water. So you don't have to pay anything, which is great. One of the cottages is a two-bedroom, one-bath. The other one is a one-bedroom, one-bath. There's no leases currently on the tenants who live there. Um, however, they I read that they do want to stay there and they are good tenants. So that's what it is. Now the rent roll, so it's basically two separate structures on one property. Just remember that. It's a big property, 100 by 100 lot. Um, and it said it was renovated in 2017. If that's true, obviously we want to go deeper into this to find out. You want to go see the property. You want to walk through it and see what the deal is with repairs if there need to be any. But 2017, that's a good sign that things are, are up to date. Now, let's go down here. We can see that it's been on the market for a little over a month now. Um, but let's go up. So it does have a cesspool. This doesn't have any normal sewer. So that's one thing you want to take into account as well when you're doing your due diligence and going through inspection. You want to make sure that that is all good. One thing that they did put in here that, you know, when you're trying to find the rents, a lot of times they'll put it in here. So you don't have to actually go out and try to figure out what a two bedroom, one bath and a one bedroom, one bath would rent for in this area. So they're saying it's $3,500 they're getting in rental income. Now, you definitely want to check if that is the case, but let's just run the numbers off of that, what they actually have listed. So I'm going to open up my spreadsheet here. I'm going to zoom in a little bit because obviously this is a little tough to see. And I know in my last video I made it was tough to see. So we'll put the taxes in here, $7,400. So $359,000 is purchased. We're going to say that the after repair is $359,000. Um, obviously I think this is a little bit high for what it is, but let's just run the numbers on, on what they're asking for. Purchase closing costs, I'm estimating at $9,000. The repair cost, I don't know. They just said it was renovated in 2017. So we're just going to put five grand for that. If you do inherit these tenants and they want to stay there, odds are you're not going to be making any repairs right away. You're just going to let them do their thing and, and, uh, you know, make repairs as, you see fit and as they need it. So we're just going to say maybe an initial estimated repair cost five grand. Maybe there's something that you have to take care of. Um, okay. So the total projected project cost is going to be $373,000. Now let's say you're putting, this is 25% down. 
right? So your loan amount is going to be $269,250. So 25% down is typical for a, a standalone investment property. If you're going to live in the property, obviously there's different advantages to loans that you can get. You can get an FHA with a much lower down payment and stuff like that. But for a strictly investment property, odds are the bank is going to make you put at least 25% down. So here we go. So I have my little calculation here, $89,750 down. Right. That's just for the down payment. So I put here what they're estimating the $3,500 um, a month income that the, the rentals um, producing. So now up here, also, I wanted to take into account, show you guys the loan interest rate I put to make this calculation is 3%. Right now, that's a pretty standard rate. It might be a little bit higher just because it's a, an investment property and the bank is taking a little bit more of a risk on that. But that's a, a pretty good number to put in there. And that's over 30 years, uh, regular conventional fixed rate mortgage. So we're going to come down here now. What are your fixed monthly expenses, right? So you're going to have fixed monthly expenses. Your mortgage with the interest is going to come out to um, $1,135. Now, here's the fun part. Electricity, zero. They're paying it. Water, zero. They're paying it. PMI, if you're putting down a 25%, you're not going to have PMI. That's only if you're putting down below typically a 20% down payment. Uh, then that PMI will, will start to, to factor in. But for this one, zero. Gas, zero. They pay it. HOA zero. There is no HOA. Flood insurance zero. Now, how do you know if it's if it's going to be zero flood insurance? Well, you got to do your due diligence. Let me pull up the FEMA flood map. You can easily Google this, guys. This isn't something that's difficult. Do your due diligence. Here's the FEMA flood map for this area. Now, this property is on the corner of Cedar and Jefferson. So we're right over here. Here's Jefferson. Here's Cedar. Here's the property. You're in X. X means no flood zone. It's not going to flood. Here's all the flood zones just south of it. So you're good. You, you don't have to worry about flood insurance. Let's go back. Homeowners insurance. I'm estimating at $150. Now you're going to want to call up some insurance brokers in those areas and just get what a property insurance quote would be. Just get it. Call up three different places and they'll give you and you'll have a very good idea of what that would cost. Property taxes are going to be broken down to $616 a month. So that's your fixed costs. You know those are definite. So now we're going to come down here, sorry, to, I'll zoom in a little bit more here, to variable costs. What is that? You have to account for vacancy. If someone leaves the property for a month and you got to rent it out, you know, you got to account. You're, you're going to be eating that. So we're going to estimate it at 8%, $280. Repairs and maintenance, you know, ongoing maintenance, a light bulb needs to be fixed. You know, a leak needs to be fixed. You got to call out a plumber to do a little bit of work. We're going to, you know, prorate that at $262 a month that you're going to be coming out of pocket. So that's seven and a half percent. Now, all these percentages is of the rental amount that, you know, of the $3,500, which we said is your rental income. Now, CapEx, what is that, Jordan? That's the roof goes out. Your hot water heater goes out. Um, you know, big expenses, stuff like that. The cesspool needs to be um, fixed. There's something clogged or there's something wrong with it. That's a huge expense. Now, you may not be spending that for 10 years, but when you do spend that, that could be a $10,000, $15,000 you know, expense. So you got to prorate that every single month into your numbers. So we're going to do 7.5%. Property management, we're going to manage this ourselves. I live on Long Island. If you live on Long Island, you can manage this yourself. If something happens, you can make a call or run out there and take care of it. Total, $2,706 in expenses, right? So your monthly expense is $2,706. So we're going to skip this. This is a 50% rule of thumb. You don't have to worry about that. We're going to go down here. Now, here it is, guys. Purchase price, your monthly income, your monthly expenses, your monthly cash flow, $793 a month based on these numbers you will be making. Now, annually, that's almost $9,500. So almost ten dollars a year just based off of this one rental property, right? So your monthly um, net operating income, two grand, 2,191. Total cash needed out of pocket. Now that includes you know, your, your closing costs, your down payment, and the initial repair costs that we said you have to put in. $103,750, right? So you put that money down. Now let's say you don't have $103,000. Go in it with your friend. 
Ask an investor. This is what I do all the time. You know, if you don't have money, if you bring a good deal to someone, but you don't have the money, but you could show them these numbers and you're getting a cash on cash return that they like, they'll give you the money. Don't worry about that. Here we go. Cash on cash return on investment, 9.17%. Not terrible. Almost 10%. You know, you're not getting it. If you put your money in a bank right now, what are you getting? You know, one and a half percent on your money. Someone's just, you know, putting your money into the stock market, you know, it'll average 7%. So this is above, uh, you know, a normal stock market return, 9.17% right so not bad and this is before we even negotiated anything right so let's come back up here right to the purchase price let's say we can you know haggle this guy down let's say we want to get a, a, a much better return let's say we get him down to three hundred thousand dollars now is that a practical um, amount no I mean are they gonna come down 60 grand probably not but they might they might be desperate um, I happen to know that this property was purchased, the owner who has it now, back in 2016 for 155 grand. He got a great deal on it. So 300 grand, you know, after he purchased it for 155, he might take that. You know, he or she might take that. That's a good number. So let's now run the numbers again. We have to adjust. Now your monthly payment's going to be 948. Let's adjust it down here. 2520.28. Now let's see what it is. Now your cash flow, let's zoom in here so you can see it, is $979 a month. So now your return, so now your total cash needed look is only $89,000, right? Because now your down payment is a lot lower and your cash on cash return is 13.21%. Now I don't know about you, but if you go to any investor and you say, look, um, you know, put in 50 grand, I'll put in, you know, 39 grand if that's all you have. And let's do this deal, and I can guarantee you a cash on cash return of 13.21%. Now, obviously, your cash flow, you're going to be splitting this, but obviously, you know, with your investor. But if you put down, you know, half, you're still getting a 13.21% on the money because you're putting less money down. So if you go to anyone and say, hey, look, I can get you a 13.21%, you know, return on your money right now. Well, you want to come in and do this deal anyone is going to say yes i mean 13 percent that's extraordinary that's really good once you get into double digits that's great so there you go guys this is a property here we go we'll go back to the listing 153 cedar road still on the market they told me they have an accepted offer and it's pending but look this is a deal on long island that you could get into and possibly get a 13 percent return on your money so guys it's it's doable you need to understand how to run the numbers you need to understand how to do your due diligence hire a realtor hire me to help you run through these numbers if you're in new york city watching this if you're somewhere in new york and you're just not getting a good return on your money and people are telling you it's impossible to get cash flow in this area because it's too expensive tell them to go you know go go let's go let's talk because because you know what i just found this property this is an on market deal that the public can see now, once you get into off-market deals and stuff like that, then you really get even better returns. But let's go, guys. Let's talk. If you have questions about this, make sure you comment down below. Make sure you subscribe to the channel. I'm going to be putting out more videos. And this is just a good example of how you can make really good money in real estate. So I'll talk to you guys later, and I'll see you in the next video.